huyo ndio ule mtu ambaye anawaambia wa Kenya na kivunjo usikie kwa sababu mimi siongei juu ya wa, watu wa, wa, wa Nyanza province i am not talking about a community i am not talking about laws i am talking about a specific man by the name of Raila Amolo Odinga who does not want peace for this nation and that is not hate speech i am describing a person hata nikimweta kimondo nation leo mmesema is a bully that is what the man is a bully kila siku akienda ule mtu anataka kufurahisha hata mbele afurahishe mu Afrika anataka kufurahisha mzungu anataka kufurahisha mzungu oh you see we do not have the capacity we want foreign judges to come and do our business for us oh you know we don't have the investigative capacity we want foreign investigators to come and do it for us if we don't have the capacity build the capacity mr odinga don't import capacity we don't need imported capacity na mimi sitachoka kumwambia hivyo sitachoka nikiwaambia yale mtomo hiyo yake imetoa juu yangu kutoka mwaka wa 2002 vile amesema yangu kwa ile mkutano yote ameenda na sijawahi kuona hawa watu wa magazeti wakisema wakati huo ya kwamba ameongea vibaya lakini wakati mimi nimesema nimechoka na lazima nitamjibu sasa inasemekana mimi naendelea kueneza hate against a man say what you may i must do what i must asanteni sana deo mere ye kurago wakaheti wakaire neguo na to tirago wago na to tirago wago of how we will steer our country to its destiny as a sovereign state Our founders fought bravely to have the right to make choices free of external influence. Today, the world is full of wars driven by the desire of some to explore the resources of independent nations. In our pursuit of a more stable and just order, We are champions of global institutions that are grounded in fairness and respect for national sovereignty. The Kenyan cases at the International Criminal Court have ended. But the experience has given us cause to observe that this institution has become a tool of global power politics and not the justice it was built to dispense. We are not the world's richest or most powerful nation but we are entitled to an equal share of respect for our nationhood our sovereignty and our laws Our experience at the ICC demonstrated a glaring lack of impartiality in this institution We have started to see many more nations openly recognizing that the ICC is not impartial Some have withdrawn others have considered that step twice our parliament has passed a motion to withdraw we have sought the changes that will align the icc to respect national sovereignty those changes have not been forthcoming we will therefore need to give serious thought to our membership the icc is only one instrument in seeking kama ni mambo ya judge unasikia anasema la hii mambo tunataka watu kutoka nje okay what you got my injury ni hapo huko nego eh askari hawawezi kufanya kazi wacha tuende tukatafute askari wa FBI au Scotland Yard wakuje wafanya kazi leo mmoja sio role hiyo ngweli na pia anasema anataka kuwa kiongozi wa Kenya na kuongoza wa Kenya lakini hana imani na wa Kenya wenyewe. Kwa pili ningependa kutaja kuna wale ambao wanaota wakilala na wakiongea hata wakiongea ni kama kuota wanaota. Wanaota wakifikiria ya kwamba ati kwa sababu Uhuru wako na case na Ruto wako na case sasa ndio watapata nafasi 
ya kufanya maneno yale wanafikiria watafanya Nataka mimi niwaambie ki mchana mchana ya kwamba kesi itaendelea na serikali iko imara tunaelewana iko imara hakuna vacuum ambayo iko hakuna hakuna na niwaambie hivi kwa sababu sasa siongei kama mshtakiwa mimi naongea kama rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya nikisema sisi tumekubali ya kwamba tutafanya kazi pamoja na hiyo koti tunaelewana lakini lazima pia wajue na waheshimu ya kwamba sisi pia tuko na katiba tunaelewana haiwezekani iwe ruto yuko nje na mimi niko nje wakitaka tufanye na nasema mimi naongea kama rais wa Kenya tunasikilizana wakitaka tuendelee kufanya kazi na sisi tuko tayari kufanya kazi wajue ya kwamba Ruto akiwa huko uhuru amekalia kiti hapa tunaelewana 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 uhuru akiwa kule Ruto yuko hapa tunaelewana hiyo wajue mchana mchana wasiseme mimi niko na nini au nini lakini they will not make it impossible for a sovereign nation to conduct its business we must be allowed to conduct our business and we have been willing from day one to cooperate and we are still willing but do not make it difficult for us to run the affairs of an independent sovereign nation called Kenya and i want to be very clear on that and i speak in my capacity as president of this republic yes na ndio tusi tusi tusifikirie ya kwamba kuna vacuum hakuna yes i will take on my responsibilities and answer to the case but i will not also shirk my responsibilities that I... madam president uh, your honors for good record and uh, for the avoidance of any doubt uh, i want to set the record that um, i have cooperated with the office of uh, the prosecutor before even summons were issued i have submitted to the jurisdiction of this court when required and will without any fear of contradiction do so in the future this is because i firmly believe in my innocence and secondly that i believe in the rule of law your honors I am acutely aware of my civic duties and my obligations to this court. That is why voluntarily I will continue to cooperate with the court the same way my country Kenya voluntarily became a signatory to the Rome Statute and thereby become a member state in pursuit of that constitutional obligation by Kenya i am aware that my responsibilities to the court as an individual must be balanced by my constitutional responsibilities as deputy president of the republic of kenya I am acutely aware. 
two further issues, Your Honours, that are very passionate to my heart is the circumstances that are surrounding this matter that produced two sets of victims, which I'm very passionate about. The post-election violence victims whose lives and property were destroyed and deserve justice and truth. And another set of victims which I belong to, victims of a syndicate of falsehood. And a conspiracy of lies choreographed by networks that are obviously against truth and justice. But I want to take this opportunity, your honors, in conclusion to say that at a, at a personal level, I will do my best. And at an official level, as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, that the new administration, popularly elected by the people of Kenya in free, democratic, and fair elections, will cooperate with the court because the President of Kenya and myself believe in the rule of law and we believe that justice and truth must finally be found. I will schedule your honors to leave this evening with the permission of the court, but if the court so directs, I will change my travel plans to make myself available tomorrow. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ruto. Um, I don't think the uh, status conference will uh, require your, your presence for, for tomorrow, tomorrow's meeting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, parties and participants. Um, as I said, uh, we will resume. Its ability to ensure that the Republic is protected from violence sparked by political competition was confirmed by the peaceful election in 2013 that brought me to office. The path to reconciliation was accomplished by concrete efforts at providing relief, resettlement, reintegration to victims of the violence. Communities inspired by these efforts and the National Accord took up the work of reconciliation and involved many thousands in dialogue. These efforts continue to this day and my government is committed to ensuring that they continue to succeed. This past November, an assessment mission of the status of Kenya's IDP by the AU's Subcommittee on Refugees, Returnees and Displaced Persons has recognized our efforts as a country. It concludes, and I quote, that the government of Kenya has put in place durable solutions by restoring those affected as much as possible to their original status and has further reinforced this by initiating peace-building measures that will sustain peace and consolidate the confidence which government efforts have en engendered amongst the different communities." End of quote. EGAD also concluded and conducted a similar exercise and has recognized the dedication with which Kenya tackled the plight of the victims. Your Excellencies, brothers and sisters, in times of adversity and crisis, we learn from our two friends, and we learn who our true friends are. The, there are those who pursued cynical opportunity in our difficulties. To further their political and economic agenda, they manipulated an international judicial system that is supposed to seek justice, peace, and reconciliation into bringing weak, politicized cases to court. Facts and evidence were completely disregarded. However, accusations, no matter how often, they are made or repeated is not evidence. As the cases began to show cracks from poor investigation, the world witnessed 
a concerted effort to divert its attention from the failure. The new scapegoat became the cooperation of the Kenyan government, which the court's own officials had spent the previous years praising as they were given unfettered access to the country. With the Kenyan cases came a progressive breaching of the Rome Statute's critical cornerstones of complementarity, admissibility, threshold, and gravity. Cornerstones that Africa, and indeed all Rome Statute signatories, negotiated and agreed. Observe closely and you will see that the court has unfortunately become more vulnerable to blatantly politicized designs. This new ICC, I pose, possess, poses a very grave risk to peace and security, not only in Africa, but to the whole world. What a far cry from the expectations and aspirations Africa harbored when it formed the decisive bloc that brought the court into being. We recall that there were powerful countries which announced their strong reservations about the risk of the court going down this path. We resisted their warnings in our desire for an international community in which all nations are on level playing field of justice and accountability. Unfortunately, every one of those reservations has been borne out in the Kenyan case, their assessment of the court was correct. Our experience underscores the necessity of amendments to the Rome Statute and serious reforms to the court. It must be able to live up to the expectations of its founders. And since 2010, Kenya has made strong efforts to spur reforms. But these efforts, just like the proposals made by the African Uni Union, have been resisted. A damaging negativity by some state parties about the necessity for reforms has only made the court less likely to properly carry out its function when the whole world cries out for it. Perhaps the election of our brother, Sindiki Kaba of Senegal as president of the ICC's Assembly of Straight Parties, offers an opportunity, and following his election, he has made strong statements that Africa's concerns, as the largest constitu constituency, and the sole focus of prosecutions are legitimate and deserve concrete responses. I hope is that wise advice will be heeded. Our relationship with the ICC is an acid test of our continent's place in the international community. Recall that our delegation of foreign ministers to the UN Security Council also encountered resistance to our message for a broad from a broad body that speaks often of supporting Africa's leadership in seeking peace and security within its borders. Despite such unhelpful stances, we have the ability to craft appropriate and effective solutions. We have the right to chart our own course and to correct our mistakes while staying accountable to our people. This was the burning conviction of our founding fathers and it remains our cause today. We cannot wait for reforms which, have, which we have the power and indeed the duty to take our destiny into our own hands. Our continent's attorney generals, justice and foreign ministers and experts have crafted separate and interdependent mechanisms built to be responsive to the realities and needs of this continent. Today we are poised to establish the African governance architecture, a broader African transitional justice policy framework and an African Court of Justice and Human Rights. I dedicate myself to their implementation in a way that ensures that they are fully owned by Africa. And to this end, Kenya has just signed the Malabo Protocol on the African Court of Justice and Human Rights, and I will transmit the instruments to our parliament for ratification. In addition, Kenya today pledges $1 million to the establishment of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights. I urge you, <laughs> brothers and sisters, to join me in ensuring that the necessary ratifications are in place and the resulting court is fully owned, financed and driven by Africa. This is an urgent and historical task that cannot wait. As I conclude, I want to inform this assembly that one of, our outsta of the outstanding cases at the ICC involves our Deputy President William Ruto. 
Its progress is exhibiting the same pattern of weakness as the case against me. We look forward to its conclusion so that my deputy can join me in focusing exclusively on transforming Kenya and Africa and serving our people. Once again, I recognize the debt that I and the people of Kenya owe you and the whole people of Africa for your continued and unstinging solidarity. I am inspired by the spirit of brotherhood and unity that burns so brightly in our confident, and I assure you that with appropriate mechanisms put in place, we shall never be back at that court, and I would never wish to see the kind of pain that has been inflicted upon me and my brothers met upon any other African in the future. Let us own our own sovereignty with pride, with unity, and let us forge prosperity for our people together. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.